Representative Xiao, thank you so much for joining us. Let's dive right in. Taiwan is a democracy of 23 million people on an island across from mainland China. What should Americans know about Taiwan? Well, I think the first point, as you just said, we are a democracy. Uh, we share the American values of freedom, of, of democracy, and free markets. Uh, we are a young democracy. Uh, we came a long way, but we intend to preserve that. I think the second point is um, economically, uh, we've also come a long way to make ourselves the indispensable and irreplaceable node for global supply chains in uh, modern technology. Uh, we uh, are a reliable partner, want to continue to be part of uh, the global um, technology and uh, global progress. I think a third aspect is that um, you know, Taiwan's democracy is under threat. In fact, we are on the front lines of dealing with uh, tremendous um, challenges to our survival. And the linchpin um, to stability in the Indo-Pacific region is on uh, the continuing stability and peace in the Taiwan Strait. Excellent. We'll get into that in more detail in just a moment. But first, you're Taiwan's representative to the United States. What exactly does that mean? Well, I'm honored to represent Taiwan and the people of, of Taiwan um, here in the United States uh, in fostering a partnership that is based on shared values and shared interests. Um, it's an honor, certainly, but also critical to our survival. Our partnership, Taiwan's partnership with the United States, um, which, is, which encompasses a broad range of uh, areas of collaboration, but um, the, the security, defense cooperation, the economic trade, you know, broader economic partnership, commercial ties, education, people-to-people -people ties, uh, all support, um, I think, a global uh, order uh, which, uh, where our values uh, can continue to foster. And I do want to say that in my role, I especially appreciate the fact that um, interest and support for Taiwan, at least in the Beltway, has been very much bipartisan. Uh, it has been one of the most, um, the strongest aspects of continuity uh, in foreign policy since uh, the 1980s, since uh, President Reagan uh, issued uh, commitments uh, to continuing collaboration with Taiwan in the context of preserving peace and stability in the region. And you're based in Washington, D.C. You yes. and I met for, for the first time at the Reagan Library in California. Mm -hmm. You travel around the country regularly. Is that not the case? Yes. Well, I understand that the United States is not just Washington, D.C. and not the Beltway. Um, not I, every member of the, the political <laughs> class understands that, but it's great. Yes, I, I do You know, seek to engage broadly uh, with the American public uh, across the states uh, as much as possible. Right. At the Chinese Communist Party's 20th Party Congress in October of last year, China's top leader, Xi Jinping, referred to unification with Taiwan as necessary for, quote, the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, unquote. What is your government's position on this? Well, uh, you know, first of all, we've built a democracy where we strongly believe uh, the people of Taiwan are masters of Taiwan, and only the people of Taiwan can determine the future of Taiwan. Uh, we oppose any forceful incorporation of Taiwan for anyone's personal legacy. Um, the ultimate decision about the future of, of our island must be determined by the people of Taiwan. But I think for the, the leadership in, in Beijing, um, the leadership has an opportunity to decide if their rejuvenation is done with global respect or with global condemnation. And I strongly believe that any attempt to use force to destabilize uh, the region. Any attempt to use force to coerce the people of Taiwan uh, will be met by condemnation. On the specific point of coercion, your government has in fact stated that the PRC is using its military might to conduct a sustained campaign of intimidation and coercion against Taiwan. What is Taiwan's response militarily, diplomatically, and beyond? Well, um, you know, the, the, the military coercion is not news to us. Uh, it's been around for decades, but it certainly has intensified in recent years. 
uh, when we had our first ever presidential election. And again, we're a young democracy in 1996. Uh, China used missile tests uh, to intimidate the people of Taiwan. And we have been dealing with this for decades. Um, but uh, we are determined to continue to preserve the stability of the region and continue to build a more robust uh, democracy. Part of that does involve fortifying our own defenses. Ultimately, uh, we are um, determined to continue with a strategy of deterrence. Uh, deterrence comes in three layers. Uh, one is fortification of our own capabilities and our will to defend. A second layer involves our partnership with the United States. A third involves a consistency of global messaging uh, in preserving the world order as we know it and not allowing um, bullies to use force and military coercion, intimidation to disrupt that world order uh, that has served the interests of all of us in advancing human prosperity. On the specific matter of defense, there is a $19 billion worth of arms sales backlog from the United States to Taiwan. What needs to be done to address this? Uh, well, uh, we are you know, heavily dependent on the supply of uh, modern arms uh, for our self-defenses and also for deterring any possibility of conflict. Um, and uh, there are a number of systems that have, in the process of production, have um, encountered problems of supply chain, uh, stability parts and components not arriving on time, um, delayed deliveries, uh, and we certainly hope that there will be uh, focused efforts to reform the process to enable uh, the capacity of the United States as a leader in global security um, to be in a position to help others uh, who require those advanced systems that the United States is capable of producing. How does Taiwan perceive Russia's invasion of Ukraine and what are the broader implications of that war? Well, there are many implications of that. I think, first of all, the unfortunate tragedy of Russia's invasion of Ukraine uh, was a, a watershed awakening moment for the people of Taiwan, uh, who have, uh, I must admit, been complacent over decades of peace. But I think it has really laid out a reality that um, there are bullies in the world who will not hesitate to use force to coerce others. And I think it's generated a sense of urgency in our society that we need to be better prepared to prevent such a conflict from being replicated in Taiwan. Now, that's the first broader strategic message. Prevent and deter. Yes, prevent and deter. Um, we cannot let that, you know, that course of, uh, 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 you know, Russia's invasion or the invasion of any country towards another uh, smaller society uh, become part of a new world order. Uh, we we must, um, I, I think, assert um, a global interest in maintaining stability uh, in the status quo. And, and so I think that is our primary interest. Uh, but having said that, I think there are a lot of lessons that we are, are learning from, from that. You know, first and foremost is um, the determination of the Ukrainian people to defend has been critical to their survival. Uh, they've been incredibly resilient. And I think it uh, serves as a lesson to the people of Taiwan that we must also uh, be better prepared and therefore making ourselves more resilient uh, to any mm -hmm. possibility or potential of coercion and threat. I mean, th the third level uh, involves some more tactical uh, aspects of this, and we are seeing how the Ukrainians are quickly adapting to some modern technologies uh, in a very asymmetrical way, um, in a David and Goliath way, but you know, we also have an asymmetric strategy uh, in uh, making ourselves um, into a porcupine. Um, under normal circumstances, you treat us nicely. Uh, we are a force for good, um, warm and hospitable, but don't mess with us. Um, Anyone who attempts to swallow us uh, will also suffer consequences. And I, I think um, we are we, we must learn from the lessons of Ukraine in terms of uh, having those capabilities to deter any attempt uh, to swallow or to annex or to intimidate the people of Taiwan. You've mentioned a few times, you've underscored how mm -hmm. Taiwan is a democracy. It's a thriving democracy. What should Americans know about your upcoming election in January? Well, um, you know, like the United States, we have very competitive politics, and um, 
every election uh, since, again, we only had our first presidential election in 1996, but um, there have always been indications of um, Communist Party um, influences and attempts to intervene in our politics uh, so as to uh, promote one of their favorable candidates. And there's no reason to believe that that's not going to happen. But um, I think we continue to try to ensure that uh, we have a very resilient and robust democracy uh, where the people of Taiwan can cast their votes free of coercion. Um, I think that's the ultimate strategic goal. Um, but at the same time, I, I think it's important to also assert that the people of Taiwan are uh, gradually building a, a mainstream consensus that we want to maintain the status quo. Um, any attempts to disrupt that goes against the will of the people of Taiwan. And um, elections are challenging, they're competitive, they're sometimes painful and partisan, but ultimately we must build that unity uh, so as to make our society much more effective in dealing with all of these external challenges, the hybrid challenges uh, that are ahead of us. Taiwan's President Tsai has been to the Reagan Library twice, most recently when she was with U.S. Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. In fact, the act of hosting Speaker McCarthy and President Tsai resulted in uh, the Reagan Library being sanctioned by the People's Republic of China. But at the library, President Tsai invoked President Reagan while highlighting, quote, to preserve peace, we must be strong. I would also like to add that we are stronger when we are together, unquote. So what does it mean for Taiwan and the United States to be stronger together? Well, I think, first of all, that quote does um, exemplify the spirit of President Reagan and his legacy in peace through strength. Um, but I think the second aspect of it is that um, we must be unified. And, um, you know, the, the, the aspect of being stronger together is that, you know, deterrence, um, you know, Taiwan alone, our, our determination, our will to defend um, is critical but it might not be enough. We need to work with other like-minded allies and partners around the world. Similar values. Who share the same values, but also who share similar interests. We are acting on shared interests in preserving peace and stability uh, in the region and also preserving free commerce. The Taiwan Strait uh, is an area where over 50% of global maritime commerce passes through. So you can imagine any disruption of the Taiwan Strait. So together in working on our shared values and our shared interests, we are certainly much stronger together. Final question. The organization you lead on behalf of Taiwan in the United States is called the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office. I'd like to focus on the economic yes. aspect of your role. Now, according to The Economist, the, that publication, Taiwan produces over 60% of the world's semiconductors and over 90% of the most advanced ones. And most are manufactured by a single company, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Corporation, often referred to as TSMC. So how can both Taiwan and the United States protect global supply chains from the threat of China while enhancing economic opportunity for both Taiwan and the United States? Well, of course, you know, the best way to protect global supply chains in the technology sector is to ensure uh, we continue to maintain peace and stability, prevent any possibility of conflict. Um, that's the first point. I think the second point is, you know, we want a more robust Taiwan-U.S. economic partnership. Um, a lot of Taiwanese companies, uh, as they continue to invest more in Taiwan, um, are also looking for opportunities abroad to expand their global footprint. And uh, many companies are looking at the United States as a place for investment and um, expanding um, their ability to manufacture at larger scale uh, on a global level. So I think it's important that from a policy perspective, we work on the incentives, uh, the policy infrastructure that would facilitate that, uh, that would facilitate more bilateral investments, uh, more robust collaboration uh, in so many ways. And so uh, we have been working in my office on um, actively on a uh, trade agreement, but also on a tax agreement, which would give Taiwanese companies who are looking to invest in the United States fair treatment as some of your other major foreign investors. So your call to action is a trade agreement and enhancements to the tax treatment. Yes. Great. Representative Xiao, thank you very much for joining us. 
Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here with the Reagan Institute and Foundation.